my experience and my observation is that most women are men in skirts, meaning that the way their presence, their being, the way we roll in the world, it's very masculine mm-hmm. because we've been conditioned and programmed out of our feminines. That clip from The Breakfast Club with Dr. Ayan Lavanzant was uh, very triggering for me. Uh, as many of you remember, it led uh, to a more viral moment here on this very show when I invited Dr. Lavanzant to be my guest. But today, we're continuing a conversation about alpha females and why many of our quests to find love can end in disappointment and heartbreak. With us is an author. Uh, she is Crystal Jordan. Her book, Dear Alpha Female, it's not him, it's you. Uh, she's still with me, Crystal. Um, in that clip, Dr. Von Zant talks about most women uh, really being men in skirts. Um, and that is essentially a part of your argument, right? Um, like you were saying, we're just showing up with a lot of that traditionally masculine posture. Um, we're builders, we're creators, we're protectors, we're providers in our own life. And we're bringing that same energy into our, our dating connections. What do you think women should basically do instead? Because I will tell you, just like I told Dr. Von Zant, I am that woman and I, I really could feel that most of the reason I show up this way is because I'm deeply uh-huh. afraid, based on my experience uh-huh. previously with men uh, from childhood uh-huh. on, that a man uh-huh. will not protect me, a man has not Absolutely. provided for me, and I don't want to uh-huh. be without those things. Um, but I Absolutely. know that there's, there's more nuance there. Absolutely. I, I want to say, first of all, I saw that clip. Um, I talked about it and I actually went on Iyanla Van Zandt's Fix My Life. And the show was titled Winning in, in a Career, Losing in Love. And so four years hmm. ago, I actually went on the show five years ago and she <laughs> very, um, very, very candidly shared with me and, and three of my colleagues why we were you know, losing in love. And I, at first I was, I was resistant to it. Um, but I'm the type of woman that as most queer women are, if you can show me what I'm doing wrong and it makes sense to me, I actually pay attention to that. So I would say to you, um, I see all those things in you. I definitely, um, connected with, with what you were saying in that clip, but I went on the show and I decided to change my behavior. And because I was operating in fear, as you just, as you just said, I didn't operate in fear Mm -hmm. when it came to my career. I was a publicist, entertainment publicist, and whenever I would get turned down by a client, I would never take that personal, right? Because I knew that statistics do not define me. As a black woman that, you know, went went to school and achieved more, first college graduate in my family, I never allow statistics to define me. So it was interesting to me when it came to love, like I allow statistics and what I would hear to define me. And so I realized that operating in fear was keeping me held back. And so I will say to you, I don't believe that we have to shirk, um, dim our shine or operate differently or be taken advantage of. But I think anytime you're operating out of fear, you're operating incorrectly. And so when I made some adjustments, a year and a half after going mm-hmm. on her show, I ended up engaged to an amazing man that I did not think existed. And the only thing that changed was my attitude. I stopped being afraid and I started believing that I deserve love. Just like I believe that I deserve an amazing career, I deserve to achieve what I wanted to in life, I started applying that same attitude um, to relationships. But I also had to realize that that person in the relationships was showing up in a defensive mode. And so she was getting the response from men that was that same attitude. Yeah, I, I think that's that's very valuable. Um, I, I would add that for for I can only speak for myself on this one, and and actually women I've had conversations with. Some of us, it's mm-hmm. not so much just a theoretical fear, which is what I hear you speaking right. to, like being afraid of that statistic of being the overeducated mm-hmm. single black woman. Totally agree with you mm-hmm. there. But but what mm-hmm. happens when it's a lived experience, right? Where you know you have had men who have abandoned, men who have not mm-hmm. shown up, men in your own mm-hmm. life, including our fathers, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or ex husbands. I, I do think when mm-hmm. it's a lived, it's a fear that's coming from a lived experience place. Um, that tends to mm-hmm. to be a bit different. What what would you say to that? Well, I would say, first of all, I am both of those things. I grew up without my father. My father was a, a drug addict that overdosed when I was in college. And I spent most of my young adult life trying to prove that I was good enough for his love. And, and ultimately, that relationship damaged me very much. I also got married very early on, and that marriage ended in divorce. I was broken. And I would say, you know, anytime you're looking at anything from a vantage point of being hurt, you have to do the work as Miss Van Zant said, you know, and when she would say you have to do the work, you know, we hear that. 
But that really means that when you're operating from something based on the pain of something that has happened to you, a lived experience, you're truly not healed. And I'm not saying that I got to the point where I was totally healed, you know, when I when I uh, moved forward, but I was able to acknowledge that I was carrying a lot of that pain with me. And I was also projecting that. I had gotten to a point where I was okay with not getting remarried. I was, you know, I had an amazing group of friends. I loved my job. My children were doing well. And I was actually had, had acknowledged that maybe, you know, being single was gonna be fine with me. And a girlfriend of mine, uh, Shanika, that's on the radio, she said, Ms. Shanika, she said, Crystal, I don't think that that's what you really want. And I think you deserve more. And I think that we need to go get some help, <laughs> you know? And for me, a very proud, very, very accomplished at, the, at that time, woman to admit that maybe I'm the problem was not something that I really could connect with because I'm like, I'm a perfectionist. I, I work really hard to make sure that I'm doing everything right. But the reality was I was operating out of fear, right? I was thinking this is, maybe I won't, you know, I can't find a great man, men aren't out there blaming it. And I wasn't doing self introspection. And so that's really what this book is about. I believe that we all have the ability to find love. I feel like love is out there. I feel like those little girls that have been hurt they deserve to be loved and cherished, and I know that it's possible. And so that's why I wrote this book. Yala Van Zandt told me, she said, this experience was not for you. This experience was for people that you can share it with. And so after I was mm. engaged and got married, I said, I have to do this. And so I wrote the book and I call it a love letter wrapped in accountability. Because for my alpha female sisters, I know that we can take, we can take real criticism because we understand it makes us better. Iron sharpens iron. Sure. Absolutely. Not not the Bible quote. That's that's and that's the truth. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 a really beautiful mission. Um, I think it's going to change lives, Crystal. I really do. And I actually am going to grab a copy for myself because I'm curious um, to hear more about your experience and um, some of the, the, the methods that you talk about. The book is Dear Alpha Female. It's not him. It's you. Crystal Jordan. Thanks for joining us here at the Grio. Coming up, how a new generation of dancers are keeping the spirit of Alvin Ailey alive. It's next on The Griot.